Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Almighty Allah, the entirely merciful and the specially merciful. Dear viewers across the globe, I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace be with you. Ameen. Dear viewers, I'm reminding you that we should work hard for increasing the level of peace, not just by saying it, but we are reminding you that it is our job as humans is to implement peace everywhere we are, whether we are in our workplace, whether we are at home, and initially it's, it begins at home, because if everything is applied at home accurately, it will transfer the skill it will go to the workplace and it will to other places. But our goal is not these limited places and offices and narrow ideas. Our goal is to spread peace or spread, in other words, spread Islam because Islam means peace. It comes close to that. It is our job. And we do this by spreading the greeting and the beginning and then it goes on and on and on and on. Uh, I'm reminding you that we are here to share pure knowledge. And I, even the word pure is not enough because it is authentic knowledge. It is from Almighty Allah. It is from our Creator. We don't find any source available on the planet other than this source, the Quran and the traditions or the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We work hard to do this. And the more you share it, the more you will have more graduates and people who are qualified to carry this message to others. Many things in the Quran that we need our deep thinking and our question. You don't, you know that the Quran left nothing unturned. Everything is covered. In this world, everything that Allah wants us to know is there. And it is our job to search for it and to look for it and to take some classes in the area of Quran, in the area of Hadith, in the area of Fiqh, and so on and so forth, so that we would get this grass knowledge. And this is really very noble knowledge. And I would say that I would recommend, if, if I still have uh, some time, and I do, whenever I have opportunity to study some courses in Islamic areas, because this gives you some depth and broadness of understanding, something that I need in my life for myself, and I need it in spreading the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among humans who deserve to know it. Some issues in the Quran, not everything that you can understand by yourself, no way. Something for simple people, something that for educated people, something for even scholars, they need it. And that's why we have all this above every human knowledgeable human, there is another one on higher level, another one, and another one, all the time. And above all, there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we all the time, we need the expertise to get the expertise from the people of knowledge. Again and again and again, we all the time, I'm quite sure that you know it by now, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ All the time, learn this lesson, which means that all the time, ask people of expertise. We call them Ahl al-Dhikr, the people who are specialized in the Quran and the Sunnah, if you don't know. In other words, don't try to figure it out. Don't try to make a guess, or even an educated guess. No, this does not work well at all. In fact, it makes some sort of corruption in the information that you acquire purely from the right sources, the Quran and the Sunnah. Today I am going to focus on one chapter 
uh, one surah, one verse, but I'll take one verse, short verse only on it. Perhaps five words. Chapter number 46 and ayah number 10. I'm sorry, I am number 15. So here I'm going to focus to say it. Before I say the I, I would like to think of this. The ver content of this verse tells us that the kids, the children, should pay attention to their parents, should care for their parents. There are many ayat that deal with that topic in the Quran because the importance of parents in our life. They come immediately after worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hierarchy of importance. They get this status by whom? By Allah. And they, because of the good work that they have done in their life, so we need to take care of them. However, I raise this question for us to think of. You don't find an ayat in the Quran, a verse, verses in the Quran, that asks us as human, as adults, as parents, to take care of their, of our children. It's always vice versa. They should take care of us, and not vice versa. We should take care of them. It's something really that attracts our attention. It makes us think, why is that? What is the wisdom behind that? Why don't we find a yet that asks us as grown up to pay attention to our kids? After some research and some questions you ask people with good knowledge, you start getting the feeling of it. And you start knowing that it is something that is embedded in our creation. It's something that's there. Allah created humans. Those adults have this kind of love. You can call it by our language nowadays. And it's in our DNA. Fine. All parents, by default, they love their kids. They care for them. They pay attention to them. Not only even among humans, even if you notice animals and insects and other creatures, you would find that it's there. Therefore, there is no need for the, this kind of recommendation for grown-ups to pay attention to their kids. Rather, it is the kids who need this kind of recommendation and these reminders all the time. That's why you find this verse as an example that tells us you have to take care of your parents, to care for them. And uh, there is one hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that explains this beautiful meaning. And as we know in general, the Sunnah is the explanation of the Qur'an. It gives us some elaboration and explains what is mentioned in general language in the Qur'an. You will find specifics and details in the Sunnah about that. And that's why it's all the time we are in need of the Sunnah. And we are in need definitely of the Qur'an. So we need that. The hadith of our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that helps us understand this kind of recommendation that uh, we're given to our children to pay attention to their parents is, is that, that one 
Someone asked our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and asked him, who is the one who deserves my company, my companionship? Who among all the humans? Is it my parents? Is it my mother? Is it my father? Is it my grandfather? Is it my brother or is it my sister? Where I would put my time, I mean quality time, of course, whom should I keep company with most of my time? Who deserves this? Is it my teacher? Is it my child? Is it my father? Is it my mother? And the answer came very clear by our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Ummuka, your mother. Then he asked, then who? He said, then your mother. Then he asked again, then who? Who deserves this company of mine? Whom should I spend my time with? He said, your mother. And then he repeated, your mother. Secondly, and then thirdly, your mother. Then, fourthly, your father. This is very significant from many perspectives. Because all the time we love to say that. Mothers, by default, are very glorified and very well respected in Islam. Not only at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, even long before that, when you, we read the stories of uh, other prophets and messengers whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected that their wives and some stories of even some women who were not messengers, who were just normal humans, but because of their work and the nature of the work of women in this world, regardless of their origin, regardless of their educational or Islamic background or religious background, it is by default that women are very good person who have done very good job in raising their kids. Because of that, they were given a status that may, between brackets, may, may make some men jealous of that status that were given to them by who? By Allah, by their creator. To the degree that some of the Islamic rituals that the Muslims do were, are considered as obligations to be done by Muslim men because of the work, the wonderful work of women. Isn't that amazing? Because women have done a wonderful job in raising up their kids. Look at this simple example that a lot of men and a lot of humans in general are not focusing on that. The effort, if you ask a man to do similar job of their mother, of the wives, of their females in raising the kids, it becomes very tough issue. Look at the issue of pregnancy. It's a lot of hard work. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described it in beautiful words, حَمَلَتْهُ كُرْهًا وَوَضَعَتْهُ كُرْهًا that it carried, it carried the child in a very, which is a very hard work. Something that men, most men don't pay attention to. You can make this test, and sometimes I do it in a classroom or something. You give a bag to a male, a male, and to ask him to carry it just for one hour. 
after one hour, he starts to say that it's very difficult for me. I have to put it down. I have to do this and this. Try to imagine that if you are asked to carry a bag, whether you carry it in the front or you carry it in your back, and you ask to carry it for hours, few hours, two hours, one day, 24 hours, two days, three hours, four, four days, a week or so, you will find it's becoming very difficult and very boring act. Yet, women can do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them with this ability, with this quality. That's why you find in Islam that we love all those women who take care of this job, who do it even, they don't like it, but Allah created them for that job. It's not the job that can be done by men. And therefore, the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mothers is so tremendous uh, to the degree that if they fulfill some of the conditions, they will be called on the Day of Judgment to get access to paradise from any door they want, from any gate they want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of the good job that they have done in this life, uh, rewarded them by such a reward that he gave them the option to select the door, the gate that they will access paradise from. And also, there are many things that were given to them. So all the time we say that women are glorified and where women are respected, mothers, I mean here in particular, they were given. So we should not ignore that. Neither we men nor women themselves should ignore that. The status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to women throughout their life and inshallah in the akhirah when all of us are about to access paradise. We do thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us throughout the whole Quran and we do ask Allah to keep do not to prevent us, not to deprive us from giving, from getting this guidance from his book and from the sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Amin, amin. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.